Well, greetings and salutations, everyone. I hope everyone is still doing well, and welcome to today's second half. Before we jump into today's second half, a couple links. As many of you know, I rely on Patreon, PayPal, channel membership, and the merch to help the channel to continue to grow and go. Links to Patreon, PayPal, and channel membership is in the description below. Merch displayed directly under the video. Also, Dogman, Frightening Encounters, Volume 1 through 3, the audiobook versions. They were written and researched by Tom Lyons, narrated and produced by me, Jeff Nadolny. Those audiobooks are available on Audible, Amazon, and iTunes, links to which are also in the description as well. And finally, last but definitely not least, if you'd really like to help support the channel to continue to grow and go, simply subscribe. It doesn't cost you a cent. Click that like button. Takes half a second. If you don't want to miss out on any of the informative uploads I put out daily, click that bell icon and folks, please leave a comment. Why? Well, because all these things really do help the channel to continue to grow and go. And yes, folks, they definitely do matter. Now, everyone, I have taken far too much of your time. Let's jump in to tonight's second half, shall we? All right, everybody, tonight I have a subscriber who we are going to uh, have him remain anonymous. We're not going to give him a fake name. Um, he is here to share his encounter with us. And just like I do uh, with every interview, I give them the floor and they share their encounter with us. How are you tonight? And thank you for coming on. Hey, man, I'm doing good. And I'm glad to be here. So you have an encounter. Um, there's a lot that you kind of need to uh, keep secretive. So I'm just going to let you share your encounter the way that it happened in the way um, that way I can respect your anonymity. So the floor is yours, my friend. Share away. Hey, that works, man. I, I appreciate it. Um, so a little bit about me. Uh, you know, I grew up outside of Chicago. My family was really into going fishing out in the woods. Well, basically outdoorsy stuff. Uh, you know, grew up in Boy Scouts, camping, camping with my family. I got two older brothers and my dad. And, you know, every summer we'd go up to Minnesota and, you know, we'd go to an outpost cabin and, and spend a, a week up in the woods in far northern Minnesota fishing, hiking, camping. Um, and then as myself and my brothers got older, we moved into, uh, you know, taking that vacation from Minnesota up to fly-in cabins in Canada and, and at, to a certain point up to far, far north Canada. Uh, so I'm no stranger to the woods. Um, I'm far more comfortable in the woods than I am, you know, around around water and things like that, just to put in perspective on how comfortable I am in the woods. Um, after high school, joined the Army, um, spent little over a decade in the army. I deployed a whole bunch of times to a bunch of different places. Um, and now I'm working for a sheriff's office in Southwest Louisiana. And about a, eh, about a year, year and a half ago was still on patrol, probably maybe a little bit closer to two years now. Um, was on patrol and I was on a real small town and there, there's, two main three fairs that go through this town. One's running east-west and, run, and one runs north-south. And I just hung a right, turned south onto one of the roads. I'd gone down a little ways. I was on the phone with another one of the deputies late at night, left for midnight or so. Um, and I see this thing just right across the roadway in front of me. And I mean, it was to the point where you know, I saw him on the phone, like, buddy, and I'm like, holy expletive. Um, and he's like, hey, you know, what's going on, man? Are, are you okay? And I'm like, uh, yeah, I, I just saw something, but hold on a second, man. And I you know, hung a U-turn and turned back around to go north, and I flipped the LED scene light on on my car. And what it was that I saw, I, I couldn't see anywhere. Uh, I mean, it was gone. This thing vanished. But what I remember seeing was this dog-like, kind of almost raccoonish 
creature, but it was massive. Um, I was in a charger to kind of give you a size perspective of this thing, and it was running on its back legs, but it was hunched way forward. Like if you were to think about like a raccoon that takes off running on just its hind legs, like if it was holding something, it ran like that. But this thing's back was probably six inches or so higher than the rear view mirror of my charger. So, I mean, you got to figure that's three feet, three and a half feet high. But this thing was like six freaking feet long, man. Um, it was all dark colored, either a dark brown or, or a black color. And, and the tail on it, so I, I've got a German Shepherd, and, and this is why I kind of picked that analogy to use, because you know, everybody knows how German Shepherds have, for their body size, extremely bushy, long tails. Um, and it was just like that. And, I mean, this thing shot across the road faster than I could imagine, you know, a, a raccoon or something. I mean, my first thought was, okay, maybe I saw a black bear. You know, because in your brain, you try to rationalize something that you can't necessarily explain with something you've seen before. But I'm sitting here thinking back about it, and my brain immediately was like, okay, maybe you saw a black bear. Well, hold on a second. Black bears don't have tails. Well, maybe you saw a raccoon. No, that was way too big, and it didn't have any other kind of like the unique, like gray striping, things like that of a raccoon. Then your brain kind of starts to process, well, what the heck did I see then? And it really kind of freaked me out. I mean, to the point where I was so stunned by it that I didn't even think about hitting the record button on my dash cam. I wish I had because our dash cams roll back basically 30 seconds of just video. So had I hit the button, I would have had it on video, but I, I just, I didn't think about it. It moved so fast and it stunned me with what, I, with what it was. that I, I wasn't even thinking about doing it. Um, but it sort of gets a little bit crazier. So, as I said, it's a real small town where I was at, um, working night shift like that. You know, our, our policy is, hey, go in, check gas stations, check the convenience stores, you know, kind of make sure that, you know, all the businesses that are open late at night are okay and that, you know, nothing's going wrong and everybody's safe, things like that. So I go into one of the gas stations that I go to, and this is probably, you know, 3 o'clock, 3.30 in the morning or so, um, and... I'm talking to the clerk. I, you know, I've talked to the guy before, and you know the the usual kind of talk comes up. You know, hey man, how's your night going? Hey, you have any crazy calls? Anything crazy happen? Because everybody wants to know, kind of, you know, what's the inside scoop on what's going on in town, that type of stuff. And I'm just kind of like, you know, yeah. I mean, I saw something. It was weird though. Um, and, you know, I just turned off the highway, you know, to turn south and. I don't know what it was that I saw. And that's all I told the guy. Simple as that. I didn't describe it. I didn't anything because, uh, you know, when you talk to somebody, you don't really, you, know, you don't know if they believe in this stuff. You don't want to sound crazy, especially when you're in a law enforcement perspective or a law enforcement position where, you know, you don't want anybody to question, you know, soundness of mind, mental judgment, anything like that. Um, and the guy goes on to tell me, he's like, yeah, man, yeah, I saw something crazy the other day, too. Now, I was riding home from work, and you know, I'm riding my bike, and you know, I, I just turned south on the highway. Now, I, I just crossed. You know, there's, there's a couple landmarks right there. And he goes on to describe literally exactly what I saw. He's like, you know, I, I mean, I, I saw something. I'm not sure what it was, but dude, it looked like it's the biggest raccoon I've ever seen, but this thing was like all black. It had this huge bushy tail. I mean, he described the exact same thing. And I literally just stood there dumbfounded and was like, you know, you get that moment where you kind of, you almost lock up because you're just shocked. Like, holy crap. Like, all the rationalization that your brain tries to do when you see something like this goes out the window when somebody else describes the exact same thing that you saw, but you didn't say what it was that you saw. And all of a sudden your brain goes, okay, well, hold on. So I did see that. Uh, and he just looks at me and he's like, oh shit. Pardon my language. Um, That's all right. So you saw it too? Yeah. I mean, thank God you, I, I thought I was crazy. Uh, and it just, it sat with me for a while. 
And, and finally, you know, I talked to my brother, um, who, who's kind of big into the, you know, Bigfoot, dog man, uh, you know, lizard man, kind of, or lizard people scene. And I talked with him, and I was like, hey, man, so I, I got this crazy story for you. And I told it to him, and he's like, holy crap, dude. Like, I, I, you know, I don't think you're crazy at all. I, I think you saw a juvenile dog man. And I'm like, wait, what? And he goes on to explain it, and I kind of, you know, recently started doing some more research about it, and there's a whole huge, like, folklore about this stuff in southwest Louisiana, which really freaked me out even more. Um, and now I'm I'm totally sold on it. I mean, that, that, that's the only real explanation for what it was that I saw. Um, and, it, I mean, it's still, to this day, when I go back to that area, I get goosebumps thinking about everything. Um, and it is still so vivid, like everything that happened in my brain. It, it was, it was crazy, dude. It was absolutely crazy, but it was looking back now, probably one of the coolest, most unique things I think I've ever experienced in my life. Yeah, it definitely is a unique experience when you have one of these counters. Um, one thing that you and I talked about, uh, prior is the amount of woods in the area and the um where it ran to it kind of ran towards water and then when i was saying yeah you know i i talk about how they use the waterways as roads you brought it up you brought a very interesting um fact is that they use water for the reason of covering their scent. Yeah, and, and and so that's one thing that, you know, you're right, bringing that back up. So the direction that it ran, it ran from the west side of the road to the east, and since I was traveling south, when I hooked around to make a, I made a left-hand U-turn, so I turned east and turned north. I had to have turned to the north, because there was a, a, a large building there, um, and had it run north, it would have run directly to where there's a, a small kind of waterway there that, if you think about it, that naturally occurring waterway, one, is going to create a, a break in the foliage due to the, the large amount of wooded area around that's going to allow it to traverse the, the terrain extremely quickly, um, as well as, you know, just like we said, waterways will naturally help break up scent if something's trying to track you. Um so when, when you're not leaving that scent on the ground, you're not leaving it on any sort of brush or tall grass, anything like that, when you're going through moving water, it, it, it breaks up any scent trail extremely quick, as well as since you're below the natural surface of, you know, just kind of the, the flat part of the land, it does help mask you from just natural vision. Rather than, obviously, if it were to run up to high ground, it would be silhouetting itself against the horizon. So animals will naturally run lower like that to, to try and break up that field of view, as well as, I mean, obviously they're smart enough to know, hey, waterways will, will break up any sort of scent trail. Right. Yeah, that was, I, and, you know, for the last couple of years, I've had this channel for almost three, I've I really never put that into thought. And until, you know, you had brought that up and it made perfect sense because, you know, during like those, you know, like Tommy Lee Jones, whenever he's running away from somebody, he's always going to the water and fugitive and stuff like that. So it kind of makes a, a lot of sense. Now, um, has there been, I know that you don't bring it up because of your career, um, but have you heard any other of your, you know, your law enforcement um, friends or uh, partners seen any other things like that? So uh, there, there's one guy who no longer works for our agency. He kind of moved on to some other stuff. Um, and, and he he had said that as a kid, he, he'd seen some things that he, that he couldn't really explain, but it was a, a really, really long time ago um, for him. So uh, he was you know, young when he saw it and kind of, you know, he and I joked around and I told him the story of one day and he's like, holy crap, dude, like 
no, I know exactly what you're talking about. And, and he grew up hunting in this area and things like that. And that was, the, and me telling him and him kind of talk about it, saying that he saw something really similar. He was the one that actually tuned me on to, Hey, look up some of like the culture, like, like the historical culture and, and like the folklore of this area. Um, and it really kind of tripped me out. Um, that I'm going to kill the, the French Cajun pronunciation here. Um, but it's something along the lines of like the, the loop guru or something. Yeah. The that r- r- guru from what I read a... was this almost dog man style creature that was, you know, told from parents to their kids to say, you know, don't go in the swamp, stay out of the swamp. You know, there's a creature out there that will get you. Well, you know, the interesting I always think, or the interesting thing that I always think about with, you know, folklore and stuff like that is, I, um, I mean, I believe that it, that there has to be something that triggered these, you know, this, this folklore stuff and this description of things that people talk about and, and things like that. Like, there has to almost be some sort of basis for it. And it makes me wonder if this is kind of tied into that and if that's, you know, if I saw the, the creature that they're talking about with this stuff that, you know, goes back 200 years in, in, in the local culture. Yeah, it's, I think in, I think just like you said, I, I every time I talk about Louisiana or share an encounter, um, I, I just destroy the French Cajun, uh, names but homa or whom homa or huma they have a rougarou society there and i did a whole uh, probably three videos just on encounters with the rougarou from like the early 1800s up through and um yeah i mean it's it's steeped in the culture out there it's and it's it's a yeah. perfect area for it. You've got woods, you've got swamps, and it's just terrifying. So, yeah. Now, it's, uh, did now, you see now, any... now, Homa? Or... I'm go sorry. Ahead. No, you go ahead. I cut you off. I'm sorry. Uh, so, Homa, where you're talking about is, you know, way east and, and a little bit south of us. It, it, it's south of Baton Rouge, um, more towards the New Orleans area. Um, and as I said, I'm on the southwest side of Louisiana. But the terrain, are, you know, in South Louisiana is still fairly similar um, in the sense that you've got a lot of marshlands, you've got a lot of woodlands, um, and, and you've got a lot of waterways and things. And one of the big things in that area is you've got a lot of, in, in the Homa area, is you know, you've got a lot of the bayou areas, you've got a lot of natural waterways and things. And now where I'm at is kind of that same kind of similar terrain with large waterways and, uh, and, and things like that, as well as a lot of modern land. Yeah. Did you, I know it went by so fast. Was there, um, you didn't happen to catch eye shine or anything, did you during the, I mean, it was. Well, so I, so I didn't catch eye shine at all, but what I, also remember since you brought up kind of that other side you know i I described the tail and everything like that whatever it was had a massive head and a very very defined now um in the sense that you know if you look at a, a a truly german bloodline german shepherd um their heads are, they're, they're a lot wider and kind of shorter snout length. They're almost, they're not like pit bull style or like that, um, but it's not the same kind of long, thin snout that some dogs have. They're, they're slightly shorter and stubbier, almost as if, you know, they've got a, a much wider bite. Um, and it was very, very similar to that. Um and again, I, I jump back to that as kind of a natural thought with describing it because I have a German bloodline German Shepherd, um, and it and it it shocked me the amount of features 
in this thing that I saw um, in, in this, you know, dog, what I believe was, a, you know, a juvenile dog man. Um, and a, just a, a incredibly large canine. But this thing was way too big to be a dog. It was way, way too big to be a dog, as well as it, it the the way of the way it ran. It was, I mean, you could tell it was running on two legs, and and the and the front legs of it were not on the ground at all. But they were also disproportioned from what a normal kind of canine anatomy looks like. They, you know, the front legs were slightly more humanoid, you know what I mean? As right. if they would also be able to function as a, like, arm. And and as if they could manipulate it, like how a human being can mani- manipulate their arms versus, you know, a dog, a, a true canine, can't really, you know, manipulate their front legs like how human beings can manipulate our arms. Right. So there was almost like more of like an elbow kind of bend rather than just that straight down. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yes. It, it, exactly. That that's a perfect way to define it or, or or to describe it. Now, did you? I once again, and I hate to ask questions because I know it was a very fast. But was there? Obviously, you saw some sort of elbow bend with the arms. Was were you able to notice the uh, hands or paw area of it? I, to be honest, I, I don't really remember that. Okay. But at the same time, I remember the way it was running, it had that same kind of similar, that natural rhythm of how your limbs move when you're running. Mm-hmm. Th- that that same similar motion kind of carries its arms or front legs. Um, so it, it, I, I wouldn't think it was holding anything necessarily, but that same kind of rhythm that you run with and how, you know, your arms naturally want to sway as you're running, that same style of motion kind of carried through the whole body. Right. Right. Yeah. Cause when you run and especially if you're hunched back, you're kind of your arms, no matter what, they just kind of, they, they're oddly shaped and they bend in no matter what. And it's, it's so yeah. weird. I like how you use the uh, description of raccoon because the the more I've done research on these things, I mean, yes, they've got a dog-like appearance. They've got a human-like appearance, but they have such a raccoon-like appearance as well. You know, it's like a, a cross between all three um, with the, the bushy tail, but the way they their arms are and the way they're able to manipulate their arms raccoons do as well i've researched um prehistoric raccoons back you know a couple six months ago and um you know there was actually a a species that was almost the size or a little larger than us that was you know a couple hundred million years ago and um they were huge too and able to but i you know i mean it's it's a kind of a far-fetched idea to think that one of the, those things had made it through that long without being noticed um but they do they have such a, a raccoonish like features to them the more i think about it so i mean that's a great great analogy on that um i really appreciate you coming on today i know that you know it's you were worried about your anonymity um so i mean it shows great courage to come on and i think the more that we have people like you um it actually adds some just uh credence to it if you say you know um because you're yeah. in law enforcement, you know, it's not like you're just an everyday guy. It's, you know, it's, you are actually someone that we as everyday people turn to, to protect us and, and look for answers. And there you are having an encounter going 
what what is that what do i do you know it's just i think the more and plus the more encounters that get out there i think that eventually we may get the truth of the matter so yeah it uh i mean it i, I couldn't believe it and it's just you know the, the way i you know since we're on the raccoon subject there's you know there's a really funny video that i'd seen that you know i was telling my brother about it. um to try and describe kind of exactly how it was that it ran. There's a really funny video of this this guy that like catches a takes a video of a raccoon on his like back porch, like stealing his cat food. Um, and the raccoon like runs up and grabs a handful and it like takes off running on his back legs. And I showed my brother and I was like, dude, that's exactly how it ran, except it didn't have anything that's front, you know, paws, hands, or whatever it is you want to call it. Um, it it's front limbs. So it was just running, you know, as if you were to add kind of that humanoid motion of how the body naturally wants to kind of twist and, and move to kind of conserve some momentum as it's moving. Um, and and he, he he watched the video and was like, dude, that's, that's totally what you saw. Um, and he's kind of the one that really kind of tuned me on to, to this stuff. He's actually the one that, you know, had heard uh, I had heard your video, um, and was, and he's the one that emailed you and, and put us in contact. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm, I'm so glad that he did. I was, I, I was shocked when he did. I was like, Oh my God, this is great. Cause it was, it was one of those encounters that just sat in my head. I was like, Oh my God, this is really, and then for you to go into the store and say, and then the guy to say, I saw the same thing. So you kind of knew that you weren't going crazy. It kind of validated what you saw a little bit was, was very cool. I mean, and, and that's the craziest part is, you know, I mean, as I said, I didn't tell him what I saw. I just kind of left it off as like a, yeah, you know, I mean, it's been kind of a crazy night. I, you know, I mean, I saw something earlier, but I, you know, I just wasn't really sure what it was. And it kind of tried to play it off as like a, a you know, Somebody else might think, oh, you know, it was a crazy car wreck or, oh, it was a crazy call. And, you know, you just, you know, you couldn't really figure out exactly what was going on type of thing or something like that. And the fact that he just jumped in and just straight up described seeing the exact same thing in the exact same spot just literally kind of left us both dumbfounded standing there like, whoa, okay. Um, and, and kind of like how I said, you know, I thought to myself, you know, okay, I'm not crazy. I, I, you know, I, you can tell by just a look on the guy's face, he was thinking the same thing. As soon as he saw that reaction come out of me, I guarantee you that guy was going, oh, holy crap, I'm not crazy. This dude saw the exact, like, like we both, you know, you've got that like mental moment where you know what they're thinking and they know what you're thinking and you're both thinking the exact same thing and it's, holy cow, we're not crazy. Yeah. Now, when you said he saw, was it pretty much in the same vicinity? He he described Ooh. it as the exact same spot, traveling the same direction, everything. Um, and, and what blew my mind about it is that, you know, he told me he was riding his bike home. Yeah. Like, I would be terrified <laughs> to be riding a bike home after seeing that, you know, late at night, early in the morning, and then telling it to somebody else and having them completely validate exactly what it was that you saw. I'd be like, I saw the same thing in the same spot. Yeah, I'd be definitely looking for a new route home or possibly a ride. Because, I mean, yeah. I, the way the thing moved in front of you, it's obviously going to be able to catch that poor guy on his bicycle, so... Yeah, I mean, I ain't gonna lie. I rolled around the rest of that night with my windows up. <laughs> it's like, nope. Yeah. I wonder, like, I did, we talked, and there is, you had me pull up the map. I wonder if it's like if he's going hunting that way or after a hunt going that way. I mean, because just judging from the map of what I saw, I would almost suspect him to be coming back from his hunting ground. Yes. Um, what, what, what do you think about it like that? Mm. Um, that would be my suspicion as well. Yeah. Because going, going west of that area is 
far more densely uh, densely wooded, as, as well as it goes to a much larger uh, waterway that, you know, I mean, if it's hunting other animals, well, animals are going to be attracted to waterways for numerous reasons. You know, some of them, like we talked about earlier, but also, I mean, it's a water source. Right. If you're looking for some sort of prey, you know, think about what crocodiles do in Africa with, you know, water buffaloes and things like that. You know, obviously a crocodile is going to be hunting in a waterway, but at the same time, you know, where do you know, lions and some of the other predatory animals hang out. They hang around water sources because they know that prey are going to go there. Yeah, almost lying in wait for them to... Yeah. Yeah, yeah it makes a lot of sense. That really does. Hmm. Well, I really appreciate you coming on. Um, Don't hang up after we end the uh, the show. Is there anything that you'd like to tell the subscribers out there before we end the upload? Just... uh guys gals all i gotta say is if you see something don't rule the possibility out um it's a real big world and i say that from you know by age 25 i've been to every continent except antarctica um you never really know what you're gonna find you never really know what you're gonna see and there's a lot of mystery out there awesome thank you for coming on i really appreciate it it's been a pleasure Hey, you too, man. I appreciate the offer. All right, folks. What an amazing second half. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I enjoyed sharing it with you. Great interview. Great guy. Guys, thank you for supporting this channel. It is, after all, your support that continues for this channel to grow and go. And also what makes it a place where people can share their experiences, their ideas and theories without ridicule and judgment, just treated with the simple respect that we all deserve. That is on you, the community you guys have created in the comment section. Thank you. So everyone stay safe, happy, healthy, and ever vigilant, keeping an eye on our children, pets, family, and friends. These creatures are real, they are out there, and they're definitely dangerous. Share this information with the people you love and care about, and it may just help save their lives someday. Until next time, never stop asking questions. Never stop searching for answers and God bless.